spindle power. Uh, the machine's got a very, very robust spindle on it. Um, I don't know the torque value, but it's it's very high. So this is a cycling hyper mill called Arbitrary Stock Removal. Um, and we're currently machining um, 25 chromo 4 steel um, with a 40 mil high feed face mill. We've got it running at about 80% 80, 80 rapid at the minute. Um, and like I say, it's, it's actually feeding at just over eight, eight meters a minute. So you could push this faster depending on the material and depending on the bar? Absolutely, depending on the tool um, capabilities and, and the material that you're using, absolutely, yes. So I'm here with Mike Sutton at JRM Engineering in Daventry. Um, they've got three fabulous DMG Mori DMU 75 monoblock five axis machines. Now, these machines are one of DMG Mori's best sellers. I'm going to talk to Mike about what he likes about this machine as the operator and programmer. Um, Mike, three machines here. Yep. What are you making on them? Uh, we're currently making um, wishbone components uh, for a race series over in Germany. And is that predominantly the sort of work that you do? Let's move towards this machine. It so is, yes. Um, we do vary. Uh, materials that we machine and the parts that we machine vary massively. Um, so it depends what the customer requirements are. And what, let's talk about that then, because the materials are really important in every engineering and every machine yeah. shop, aren't they? Yes. From your, your softer aluminiums right the way through your harder yeah. materials. Can you point out to me um, some of the reasons that you think this machine is capable of actually machining all of those easily and successfully? Spindle power. Uh, the machine's got a very, very robust spindle on it. Um, I don't know the torque value, but it's, it's very high. Um, and you can actually set the spindle um, to for any, any given tool. You can actually set a maximum torque value for the tool. Okay, so you can adjust so, that depending on the machine Absolutely, operation. yeah. So in the, in, the, in the tool table, you can actually set the machine to stop if the spindle goes goes over a certain torque value, a certain spindle load. Okay, um, let's we, move the camera around this way so we can see into the machine. I want you to, to maybe just explain here as well about the machining cycle, the strategy, the tooling that you're using. Yeah. So this is a cycling hyper mill called Arbitrary Stock Removal. Um, and we're currently machining um, 25 chromo 4 steel um, with a 40 mil high feed face mill. Um, the tool's running at eight meters a minute feed rate. Um, so it's pretty fast. It's doing half mil cuts, 50% um, of the tool diameter. And, and your selection of half a mil, is that what you just felt was? No, 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 that, that's what's recommended by the tool manufacturer. Um, the way you machine with high feed cutters is you take small depths of cut, but very, very fast. Um, it's different to, say, trochoidal milling, where you take big depths of cut, but a small value, small radial value. And even for such a big machine here, with a, with a lot of capacity, you can see the agility of it, can't you? You can see the absolutely, dynamics yeah, in action. Absolutely, yeah, um, I mean, we've got it running at about 80% 80, 80 rapid at the minute. Um, and like I say, it's, it's actually feeding at just over eight, eight meters a minute. So you could push this faster, depending on the material and depending on the bar? Absolutely, depending on the tool. Um, capabilities and, and the material that you're using absolutely yes now let's take a look down the bottom of the machine here because these are some of the th simple things from an operator that i like to explore as well great swarf uh, evacuation and fall away yes. on this machine and also um, i know the doors shut but when you're setting these parts would you would you you know easy to get in and access and it is very easy to get in with the curved door you've got easy access to the table once it's at, at, at a zero um, and like you say the swarf just falls away into the swarf conveyor you can set the swarf conveyor to come on at various intervals. Uh, we've got it set, to, set uh, every four minutes, it comes on at 15 seconds. Okay, so you're not continually moving no, it? No, 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 you, 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 you don't need to. I mean, it, it'll, it'll take a quite a while. It's quite a big swarf conveyor, so it'll take a while to fill up. Now, they claim DMG, let's look at the other machine. DMG yeah. Mori uh, claim the, the, the machines as, as five axis champions. Is that something that, that you would agree with now, having used these three? Absolutely, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're very good, very robust and very versatile machines. Um, some of the best five axis machines I've, I've used in my time. And have you ever been to Fronton, where these are, uh, are made? I've, I've not, no. Okay, no. maybe that, that should be on your wish list because it is a terrific factory tool. But when you see the monoblock is a one-piece casting machine, yes. extremely stiff, extremely rigid, yes. that's yes. some of the reasons why you're able to achieve these dynamic speeds as well. Absolutely, then. I mean, you, you, you can feel it through the floor as well. The, the rigidity of the machine, if it wasn't rigid, all the vibrations would be going into the base of the machine, and, but how the machine is that rigid that it's going into the base and through the floor, and you can feel it sometimes through the floor. 
I, I also like, here we can see it in motion, but the actual capacity of that table, your rotary axes, uh, Outside of that, you've still got the ability to clamp parts, haven't you? So it's not Absolutely, just a round yeah. table. You've got Absolutely. Uh, I mean, a, you, a square. You saw on the other machine that we've actually got two parts on one setup um, at the minute. Um, on this machine, of, because you need to get to that component from all four directions, you can't put anything to the side of it. Yeah. But on that one, because we're only tilting over and going from two directions, you can actually get two side by side. Um, Let's have a, a couple of seconds on this control as well, the Celios control. You yep. really like working with this, don't I you? I do, yeah. It, it, it took a little while to get used to, but it, it's very intuitive, very user-friendly, and as long as you know what you're pressing and when you're pressing it, it, it works very well. Now, a lot, a lot of control systems and interfaces have improved over recent years, this obviously being one of them. Yes. For you as a machinist and an operator, what are the things that you can do now with machines like this that you might not have been able to do years ago? I mean, you, you can see everything that you need to see first and foremost. It's got that much information on the screen. I mean, it tells you how fast it's feeding, tells you the spindle speed, tells you what positions you're at, tells you how far you've got to go. You can see the program scrolling up. We're at 183, 184,000 lines now. It's chewing some code. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, and you've got all these uh, gauges where you can see how, how much the spindle max power. Uh, this is the torque that's going through the spindle. This is the vibrations on the spindle. You can set both of those in the tool table uh, to... So you're going to minimise to, the wear of, of tooling and the machine. You're going to get the best longevity out of all of those Absolutely. products. You, you, like I say, you, you can also set those two in, in the tool table. So if it goes over a certain value, the machine will stop to save your spindle bearings uh, and your tools and, and, and perhaps your tool body um, from, from breaking if, if a tip goes. Have you used any of the diagnostic tools where you've needed maintenance or you've needed to contact the guys at DMG Mori through the I interface? have, yes, yes, yep. yes. Uh, I've used um, the, the remote maintenance uh, function where they can actually log onto the machine remotely from Coventry. Um, and that, that was... How good is that for everyone? Good for you? It is, for yeah. It's, it's like having a remote desktop on a PC. You just give them a call, give them a code that they put into the machine, or you put into the machine, and then they can remotely access your machine, diagnose uh, uh, and default problems. It's, it's very good.